Good morning everyone. I'm Jen Houston, owner of the Artsy Fartsy Gallery. I'm a full-time independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Canmore, Alberta, Canada. Welcome to Wild Card Wednesday. Today we are going to be doing a little project. Um, it's kind of not a fun fold. It's kind of more so a technique if you will. Um, here's my little Wild Card Wednesday. Um, more so, yes, a little technique that I'm going to use the color combo that came from Karen D.I. Yay! I got to chit chat with her a little bit yesterday over Facebook, of course, and um, to find out she doesn't live that far from me. <laughs> so um, that was kind of fun to, to realize. Um, so, yes, pop on, say hello. Tell me where you're from. I see Mary's already done that. Hello, Mary. Nice to see you. Hi, Roz. Um, this is a great place to find some friends. Um, if you don't say hello on uh, I, the, uh, this program that I use, I have no idea that you're there. So it's not like a Facebook Live where you kind of see who pops in and who pops out. Well, not really pops out, but who pops on. So um, if you don't say hello, I have no idea you're there. And I'd love to say hello to you and I'd love to uh, meet you if I haven't met you already. And I see I Melissa pops in here often and I see she's from Colorado. She let us know where she's from, which is awesome. Um, tell me if you're a card maker or a scrapbooker or what's, what's your specialty? Um, this week, our specialty <laughs> is going to be the outdoor barbecue uh, stamp set. I think it's been kind of fun to play with. And um, I don't know, it's making some neat cards. Allows for coloring, no coloring. We kind of did a poll the other day. <laughs> and it was kind of funny. What was it, 20 to one uh, voted for the colored version, which was, that was interesting. Um, different strokes for different folks for sure but of course the cool part about this stamp set is that if you get it with me until Sunday I'm gonna send you some cool silver foil and I know we've been kind of working with that a little bit this week as well so that's been fun how's everyone making out this morning thanks for popping on and saying hello oh Mary and we have so many uh, sewing people on here and quilters. Yes, it kind of all goes together, doesn't it? You hear me now way better. Oh good. Well, I'll turn it up even more. Make sure. <laughs> Maybe I just start talking a little less uh, loud or something. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what happens, but I'm glad that you can hear me. That's awesome. Um, all right, so first off, we have a few things to get done. Um, this is a card that I got, some happy mail. This one came from Jennifer all the way from Manitoba. Jennifer's part of my team. Well, she's an extended part of my team, I suppose. Um, great gal. And so I love this card. Isn't it pretty? It's just nice and simple, but it's beautiful. Um, that, of course, that beautiful new paper. <laughs> um, and the, oh dear, large, label me lovely, and then label me fancy. <laughs> there were two punches that kind of came out together, and I have to remember the L, label me, the large punch is label me lovely, large, lovely. And the smaller one is Label Me Fancy. And it is fancier because, oh, I'm gonna dig around here. Oh, here it is. It is fancy because, look it. It comes with a little slit and a dot that you can put inside this little label and um, make it into kind of a tag idea. So that's pretty cool. So thank you so much, Jen. Um, I love that she's she's praying for me. I love that. So there we go. There's some awesome happy mail that I get to add to my collection back there. Um, I always get, love getting happy mail just like you all. Um, yes. 
All right, yesterday, actually speaking of Jennifer, she always posts, posts such neat quotes on her Facebook. And this morning she had, don't forget, you can start late, start over, be unsure, act different, try and fail, and still succeed. Isn't that neat? You can still start start late, you can still start over, you can still be unsure, you can still act different, you can still try and fail, and still succeed. I think that's, that's exciting that, you know, just kind of stepping out and trying something new is um, success in itself, right? So trying a new technique, trying a new route to work, trying a, a new cooking dish, trying a new full um, pattern for your quilting. That's all, you know, a step in the right direction. It may not be perfect. That's okay, right? A lot of therapy has gotten me there. <laughs> um, that, you know, stepping out and risk taking is better than nothing at all, right? So stepping out and failing is better than just staying in your cocoon and never realizing some potential you have or um, a new technique, finding out new things, right? And then, um, I don't know, this year I have been on the Mail It Out Monday cards. I have these little postcards that I send in with the mail and uh, the Happy Mail. And this week's was, if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original. And that was by Ken Robinson. I guess he has a book about um, kind of becoming the, your best self and business and that kind of thing. So but I just thought that was, that was great. If, you, if you're not willing to step out and, you know, if it fails, oh well. You're never gonna come up with anything new, exciting, original, fun and um, so anyways I, I I really like that uh, that spoke to me this week <laughs> so hopefully it gives you a little eh, to go and try something new this week try something outside the box on your cards try something uh, new with a friend or your spouse or whatever um, it's kind of the spice of life right I think all right um, speaking of that, some people tried that template card from yeah, template idea from yesterday. And so I have actually put the two card pictures into my computer here. And all I have to do is apparently <laughs> click, oh, click this thing and it was going to show me who the winner is. So Jill. See if I can get it bigger. Congratulations, Jill. She tried out this template idea. Isn't that cute? Isn't that adorable? And look at the and what a great way to use those teeny tiny little ladybugs. Oh, so adorable. And how well does that go with that paper? That's from um, oh dear. <gasps> Help me out. Anyways, I think it's absolutely adorable. I wonder if I can get back to show you Kathy's as well. Maybe not. Let me see. Here's Kathy's. Isn't that cute too? I love those colors. It's so pretty. It just suits that. And I love the petal pink bow that matches with the gold. And how cool to put that enjoy today with the green. I never would have thought of that, but that's stunning. You know, it matches in with that green of the leaves and whatnot. So thank you, Kathy, too, for for uh, trying this template idea. And uh, definitely both were a success. Uh, see a silhouette, thank you. Both were a success in my mind, uh, for sure. Next, whoopsie, apparently we got no screen. Okay. Guess what? 
I did the draw yesterday for our wild card color here that we're going to use today. And it was from, like I said, Karen D.I. And here we are, a pretty peacock, cherry cobbler. We get to play with that a little more again this week. Whisper white and basic black. And those were her grad color, her um, high school, uh, school colors. Maybe they were university, maybe they were college, maybe they were high school. I'm not sure, but there we go. So we get to play with those today. And I did make a couple of cards using those colors already this morning and they turned out really neat so there we have it now let me set up my screen here so that we can start creating Dum -ba -ba -bum. Boop. here we are <laughs> i do want to show you i also used the template from yesterday to create some cards i don't know if you saw the cards from yesterday but actually if you didn't you need to go to my blog <laughs> and it's theartsyfartsygallery.com. Um, I'll give you a sneak peek. I had to use the buffalo check. And I know there was just, you know, three squares across here, but of course, take, take artistic liberties, right? Do your own thing. So I put my silver foil behind there because it just kind of goes well. And did a mustard and ketchup with the little nested label dies as the little backgrounds. And my little hamburger, well done. <laughs> and there's the little ketchup and mustards all along the inside of the card. And then for the envelope, I just did the ketchup and mustard. Do you see all the flicks? <laughs> I just, I just have to. <laughs> and then a lot of people like to do this. They put um, a stamp kind of over top of the flap and onto, um, you know, so it, it kind of goes together or so. And then I colored it up and I think that's gonna be a cute card to give away to basically anyone. Team member, I think this would be cute. Well done, right? I think that'd be neat. And then for the next one, I did this one in landscape version. You know what, the, you know what? <laughs> these things look like, these stakes look like hearts almost to me. Kind of gives me the idea. You could probably make a Valentine's Day card with steaks. <laughs> hey. And like I said before, this original stamp said, A dad like you is rare. But you can swap this out. This friend part came from Itty Bitty Greetings. So I just embossed it and um, cut it, fussy cut it out. I used that classic label punch to punch this section out and then an ah with a whole big space and then I just kind of overlap them and then where it's kind of overlapped I put that little friend word. Cute hey? And here's my buffalo check. Even though it's not red and white it still is kind of, it just adds that masculine vibe a little bit. And here's my little uh, barbecue. That I colored up on the inside to add that and here's all the stakes and I outlined them all and with the gray stamp and blend and just flipped on some more I think that was ivory I used and there again is that little barbecue so there we go there's some ideas for you from that little layout that I did yesterday all right um I think I'm going to show you the two cards that I made later at the end. Don't let me forget. I think we'll just hop right into making a card here. So we're going to use the starburst technique for this one. Anybody done the starburst idea? Give me some hearts if you've done that before. And of course our color combo is cherry cobbler which I'm going to use as the, our card base for this card and then I'm going to use whisper white as a layer and then another whisper white go, go. as another layer and then all our starbursts are going to be in pretty peacock and then I'm going to have the the 
kind of a circle of the um, basic black just to tie that color in as well. I'm gonna do up a barbecue and r my red meat love and husband would love steak hearts for Valentine's Day, <laughs> right? I, you know, I, I was even thinking this morning, you know, wouldn't it be cute to have like, make a wreath out of like all the, the items that you could barbecue? Like, you know, a lot of people do flowers with the Stamparatus, but what if you did like a barbecue wreath? <laughs> Something, hey, is this a, you know, am I prepared to be wrong <laughs> to create something original? <laughs> Anyways, we are gonna get rolling here. My first step is going to be to stamp this barbecue. I've got a little scrap here, I think it'll fit. Maybe it won't, oh, just. I'm going to use my basic black, the memento, to ink up this barbecue here. And I have seen a few of the barbecues on Pinterest, and they've been red, and they're kind of cute. So I don't know if there is really such a thing as red barbecues, but hey, we're going to make one. And so, of course, I'm going to use my Stampin' Blends to color that up. I've got my cherry cobbler set. I'm gonna take the um, dark version and wherever there's high, um, not highlighting, kind of strokes already made for shadows, that's where I'm gonna go over top with the dark. And it's just a loose representation. It's not, you know, if I, I go a little outside a line or something, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about it. And the bottom is going to be a little bit darker because it's kind of a rounded shape, right? The barbecue kind of is a little bit curved. And so I'm just gonna go right in with the all dark on this layer. Oh, I should go here while I'm, although that could be gray. Let's do that in gray, just to tie that in. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and color in with the light version, kind of going a little bit over what I already colored. And then it'll kind of smoosh, smoosh it all together. Be kind of careful not to touch the handle. The stamp and blends kind of, not bleed, but they spread a little bit. so. Try not to go too, too close to the handle. Even if you leave a little bit of white, it's okay. Okay. I think I want it a little bit darker in some areas again. So I'm just gonna go over top. Okay, and then I just want to go in with the light and color this again, this portion, this middle part. Okay, and I think that's good. I'm going to leave, well, I'll smooth that out a little. I'm going to go in with my color lifter. <laughs> you didn't buy this set, but now you have to, eh? We call them grills in this, oh, okay. And there are definitely red ones, really? Okay, you have a red barbecue. Oh, neat. Okay, so there you go. You should do that. A meat wreath sounds awesome. Maybe that's uh, tomorrow's project. Thankfully thinking of you, because you're uh, an omnivore. <laughs> and just kind of taking that in to kind of the color lifter doesn't really take off color, I don't think. It just kind of makes it blend together a little better. Kind of probably re-wets it a little bit and makes the colors mingle. All right, let me get out my smoky slate for that little chimney part. And maybe those, um, the legs on the barbecue. Let's do that. Okay, this is the light version. Let's go in with the dark first. Okay, and here. And just a little at the tops. 
because it's kind of underneath the barbecue a tad, so it's going to be a little darker color than, say, the front legs. And then go in here with that lighter version. I think I'm going to go back in with that dark. There. All right, and then I'm going, going to use my, that's not it, soft suede for this wood portion over here. I suppose you don't need it, but, oh, that's the wrong end. And there again, just kind of using the dark portion to put um, where the lines are. And then come back in with the light version. If you little, leave a little white, it's okay. Just makes it a little bit uh, more realistic. I'm just going to add that there. Um, I think we're done. I kind of want to color, do something with that to make that little, not speedometer, but uh, um, heat thermometer. <laughs> Maybe a little more, oh, look at this. Maybe some yellow will make it pop a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to cut this out. So there again, just kind of, it's not, not hard to cut. All the lines are pretty straight. And you can go. Oh, Indy. Indy. The elk are outside, so she's probably barking at them. They've been hanging around here quite a bit the last few days, so that's kind of fun. bottom here. Oh, Indy. And I wonder if I should give this a try. No. <laughs> I was going to color this in with black, but then I thought, oh, that might get rid of that wheel there. Has anybody tried this set, but used stays on onto the foil, silver foil paper? I'm kind of wanting to try that. So to, to make the barbecue kind of silver. As opposed to say coloring it just gray. there we go and like I've shown before if you have little like because this is going to be going on black so if you have little areas that kind of uh, they're kind of white little halos just go in with your stamp and blend marker and kind of color the sides it'll help kind of mask those little white bits um now oopsie wondering about hmm almost coloring this in gray as well so it doesn't stand out so much although maybe I'll end up putting a seam over top of that I think I'll just go in here color it in there um Maybe for that portion, just so it doesn't stand out so much, I'm going to go in with the crumb cake on the little whisper white areas here. For here, um, 
Let's. I'm gonna go with my basic black. Hopefully it's not too well. It's pretty dark. Just to fill that gap in there a little bit, so it's not so bright white. Okay. So here's my little barbecue, which I will use in a second. Now we're gonna get to the starburst portion of our card. Um, I looked online for a different, um, not recipes, but yeah, I guess recipes. And this is kind of uh, one of them. I think it works. You may get kind of stuck because you've kind of cut different lengths um, on the two, on the next card, I will show you that I just did one measurement all across the board. It does have a lot of waste to it, but anyways, I guess it's teach their own. So the measurements that I'm going to use for this one is four and a half by one and a, they're all one and a half wide, inches wide, but this is going to be four and a half, four, three, and two. And there again, if you don't get the measurements, that's okay. I will have them on my blog later on today. So they're all one and a half, four and a half, four, two of them at three, and two of them at two. Okay, so then you're gonna get out your little trimmer, and we're actually gonna cut these on the diagonal to make our little, our little rays, if you will. Okay. So we'll cut all of those. So just line up the top corner in the little trough and the bo opposite bottom corner and cut that cut. So it's easy as that. And this, of course, I've seen with um, multiple colors of paper. So, you know, it's a great way to use up some DSP colors that kind of coordinate. I've done this for Christmas using some, you know, DSP that is Christmassy. And I'm just putting a Christmas thing in the center. But this one, I'm just going to do all one color. All one pattern. Just cardstock, plain old cardstock, which is not very common. <laughs> don't 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 try anything new. You never get any new results, right? I now have to decide kind of where I want the bursts coming from. So I'm gonna get myself a pencil and my ruler. Love my grid paper for this. Just kind of lining up the grid paper the big darker lines in the center more so, I suppose. Uh, although, nope, because this one, these are too small. So it's gonna have to be a little bit off center, if you will. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my ruler and line it up with those large grid lines. Of course, this is, oh, this is a three and three quarter inch piece of cardstock. So <laughs> try to do that with, uh, oh, you've done that with rainbow colors. Oh, that'd be fun. All right, so then I'm just gonna put myself a little pencil mark here. I'm gonna end up making like a little cross, if you will just so I know where I'm gonna put all those points of the sunbeams. And one there, that's all. Don't go dark, just make yourself a little grid. Now I'm gonna sort all these out according to size. There again, in the next project you'll see, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. There, okay. So here we go. I'm going to get my, I think I'm just going to use my snail tape for this. Now where you're going to have, oh, see that doesn't fit. That's not going to fit. The 
let's just move this line up one more, whatever this is. I think we're on the centimeter side. Sorry, everyone. Shaking everything. Okay, let's go up one more. Like so. I think that's two by the looks of it, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start with my smaller ones, smaller pieces, triangle here, and start my burst. I'm gonna just make sure your point starts right where that X meets, and I'm just gonna start straight up and down on this one. Okay, there we go. That one's not gonna fit. This one will fit. Again, making sure that point goes right into the center there and you can leave as much or as little space in between those bursts as you like I have a feeling I'm gonna have to cut some more because I'm gonna go quite narrow on this one and because these guys aren't gonna fit along here um, they're kind of not gonna get used there all right, so I'm gonna try and keep the, you know, those in-betweens kind of the similar sort of size, if you will. Try the short ones on the sides. Oh. <laughs> well, wouldn't that work? <laughs> And of course, this is going off my paper, but that's totally okay. Look at you. Janet saves the day. Look at that. And so you just go all the way around and around and around. That way, I guess. I don't know if you have to have the angle at the same um, in the same direction I don't know if you have to or not but just we can always give it a little trimmy trim <laughs> smart to lay this all on here first <laughs> as I say this now right um, just so that you don't end up Let's see how many are gonna fit here I don't think I'm gonna get well, maybe I can see no nope. okay so I either have to go a little Closer together. I think I'm just going to trim this this one down a little bit, and then it will fit. one more in here so yep it fits perfectly but <laughs> this needs to be a little smaller Let me, I guess we'll just cut it like this in hoops that it will still need just a little more off Kind of short, isn't it? I do have a 
larger center piece. So if I kind of go to about there and it doesn't quite line up, it's going to be, oh darn, see, look at So then it's a little too short. It needs to cover here. Um, I think we'd be okay if we even did to there. of Bethlehem here. <laughs> so then you're going to flip this over and basically cut all these extra little bits off. You can use your paper trimmer. Um, I'm just going to go lazy because it's got glue on the back of those strips. And I don't want glue all over my trimmer. Then that's another thing I have to clean. Then <laughs> cleaning is not my forte. It's not a pri. It's not my forte. It's not a priority. Let's put it that way. I'd rather make cards <laughs> than clean. Okay, there we go. Now we can get rid of all these little bits and bops here. More over here. Now oh, they're stuck to my fingers. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now my thought was to put this in the center and this somehow here. I'm almost wondering if we need some kind of white to make it pop or we can switch it out with white. But then I need to find something that's black too. Okay, let's glue it all together and that maybe will help us out. So I do have a piece of Whisper White here, measuring at four by five and a quarter, and that's going to go onto my card base on the front. Of course, I was being, you know, thrifty. <laughs> and cut out a layer out of there that I may use on a different, my next project here. Um, then I put the Starburst over top. Um, you tend to want to, use whatever color you had in the in-betweens of the starburst if you kind of um, border it with the same color it kind of looks finished i'm not liking this little bit and this little bit so i'm just going to take my trimmer and half off the same amount so like an eighth of an inch on that side and an eighth of an inch on this side it's just distracting that little It's way too big. Maybe that's why it's too much. Hmm. Let's try a smaller circle. I might even have some already cut out. Let's see. I think that helps. Ooh, maybe we could 
add some. I had a little piece of the silver foil. some pizzazz or not. Hmm. Try the right white circle behind the black. That might match it a little better, wouldn't it? almost makes it get lost, doesn't it? The black. Where that shows up a whole lot more, but if it was smaller, do we have any sheets already cut here? Oh, I've got a, I don't know if I want that shape, but. That might be kind of fun, hey? I wonder if I did that in the silver foil. Silver foil. Where did I put? Um, I have a started sheet somewhere. Let's try it. Use the starburst punch. I don't think I have a starburst punch, but that sounds fun. Let's use a punch. There is this Taylor tag. something a little more because this one's not quite right. Well, let's go, let's go with the silver. I'm blinding everything. Oops. <laughs> I'm not blinding everyone yet. Okay, let's, it's two inches enough. Ah, uh, yes. Or just thought of something. Just there is something. Hang on. After I you know. What if I'm going to run this big one through my brick embossing folder and add some white? Let's try it. Risk being wrong. You like the white and the black circle background? Yeah. It's kind of fun. Add some texture to it because everything else is kind of pretty flat. So I'm going to get my. We did this yesterday my um, white craft ink and I just, mm, just kind of rub over top. Just to kind of soften some of those bricks. Give it a whole lot of, uh, here I am. there. And a 
if I did. I think this needs to be one size smaller, I think. Let's see. Okay, so we have this size. Let's put that. Let's see what happens. So I'm just going to run this through my big shot. garbage. I think that's a little better. Like I suppose it doesn't have to go right in the center either. What do you think? I like the white and black circle background. different. I think that's too big. I love, love, love this brick. I think that's too, what if I did that in <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try this. With the stitch nested label die, let's try. You know what's throwing me, right? There's no buffalo check. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay, right there. But I'm going to cut this a little. I guess I should glue this down. I'm just going to get out my just some liquid and go quick. layer down and then let's pop this behind here you don't want too much showing but just enough to be a little something a little hit of something because I kind of want it straight with those bricks like so and then I think I should pop this up. And I think, you know, if I do it on an angle, I think it's okay. It might make it a little less. I try to be realistic. Yeah, a little one fit here. Woohoo! I think so. But I'm going to use one of these little portions for right there. I should probably put something under that. There. Okay. Let's 
sweet. Just the circles. Oh, you don't uh, stamp something on the white. I was thinking that too. Um, you could stamp the some of the um, the food. Okay, let me just think about this again. I'm gonna put that there. Put this here. Yes, I think I do. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Let me add. I'll pop this layer up too. Why not, right? There we go. Turn the silver the other way. Could buffalo champ uh, stamp buffalo check stamp on a circle yes I could I could I wonder if I if I did that is that too much okay just go with what I thought be done with it cute and then I want to add a little bit of that I had a little piece of vellum left over. Okay, I'm gonna turn this paper over because that little piece is going to drive me crazy. Sticky. Now, yesterday we used the tulip punch to add in our smoke. Today, let's just go with we're going to make our own. Oh, way too big. What am I thinking? <laughs> oh, sheesh. Starting a forest fire, by the way. <laughs> that would be my kind of, you know, barbecuing, the cooking. <laughs> it would cause a lot of smoke. Okay. And now I'm just going to put a little glue dot because, of course, vellum's tricky because you don't, it, when you put adhesive on it, it kind of uh, shows, shows where the adhesive was, right? So let's just kind of tuck it underneath that little chimney stack. So, needs some a hit of red, doesn't it? Needs something red. So, how about our saying, love is in the air. Oh, wait, that's the barbecue. Let's do that in cherry cobbler. And how about we emboss it? Do I have a cherry cobbler? anything from this guy this is the center so I know that I'm not gonna going to need inside here so I'm being thrifty <laughs> all right I need my Versa mark gotta love when everything I do is not how I planned it off that you don't want. I always go in with a little paintbrush. Just being lazy. <laughs> Usual.
Okay. So now I wonder, I think I just want it straight, but I'm going to this fit just to get it out. No. Nope. I'll just do a little cut. Put that back in the box where I came from and let's trim this up nicely into a little line. All right, I'm gonna kind of line up that sentence with, <coughs> pardon me, the little plastic piece there. Make myself a straight cut. Oh, maybe I'll do a Lisa Hardy cut. Okay, and line this one up. Put the line on my trimmer. Let's do a little Lisa Harden cut. So just on the angle there. And then on the other side, parallel, like so. Love is in the air. <laughs> Cute. Dimensionals. Here you are. I kind of want a steak. The sentiment on cherry cobbler embossed in black. Yes, that would have worked too. I kind of want to do that steak as the heart, like kind of what we were talking about. <laughs> I don't know. All this love talk. I kind of want, I don't know. I think I might need to add an extra dimensional there to make it even. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it. If I want to add a steak there as the kind of a little heart idea. Otherwise, I think she's okay. Kind of cute. And then I will do something. Maybe I'll add the steak here on the insert and for the envelope. Um, did I not? No, I didn't. I'll, I'll, I'll play with something and figure out a fun envelope and insert for this uh, card. And of course, I will show that on my blog later on today. Thanks, Martine, for sharing. That's a big help for my little business. Okay, there we go. We will we'll play with that later. All right, our last card is going to go quick. This time I'm going to use Pretty Peacock. Here's my little card insert. I'm going to use Cherry Cobbler as my layer that goes around here, like so. I'm just gonna glue that down right now. And of course nobody's gonna see that little thing that I chopped out of the middle. <laughs> All right. Here is my next layer, so it's just a quarter of an inch smaller on each side. And then this time what I did, okay, I'm going to end up wasting a lot. I'm going to use the starburst idea from a card I'm making Friday with my niece. Awesome! Oh, and post a picture of it. I'd love to see. Um, here is the In Colors, the 6x6 DSP. Um, I quite like it because of this so I thought okay what I did instead of cutting different sizes because then I found I just get caught I'm just going to cut rectangles that were one and a half inch and leave the length okay that way it's going to fit wherever you put it um let's do this one we did that one portrait we could try this one let's try it landscape. So let's go this direction. Also, uh, I'm going to kind of put it off center as opposed to right in the middle. 
I had a ruler. Yes, I did. Okay, so I'll just kind of line things up where you think. Here we go. We're going to just draw a little point with which we put all of our centers of the starbursts right in the middle of that. Line up with this end, this end. Good to go. There we are. Made ourselves a little X. I don't know if you can see, but you saw what I did. Okay, now here we go. We're just going to start gluing. Now I could, I could alternate. Maybe we'll see what that looks like. Here. Okay, see how much, like I'm going to have a lot of waste. I know that. It's okay. I suppose it would be kind of fun to, we haven't, I haven't switched up the patterns. Maybe I will. Let's do it. But I do love that check. I will say. We may get caught, though, at the end where two patterns are the same. That's the only thing. So we'll we'll go with it. If I um, the patterns in this kit actually there are four different patterns. So if we need to um, kind of add an extra one in, we'll do that. See, it just it just makes it go quicker. Oop. And then your tape runs out. Oh, somebody's ringing the bell. And of course, ooh, maybe I should try this. You don't have to go all the way around. Still no chopped kit. Um, Natasha got hers. Karen, have you got yours? We can, I guess, see. Um, maybe a fun idea, we'll see. Okay, let's go direction. Andy Houston. And a check one. And Gina, if we have to extend the the um, time frame, you don't either. Okay, um, we'll see. If you need more time, let me know. That one here's up, but it's in the it's in the mail. It's been in there for a week and a half. I think Canada Post is just really slow right now. do this top portion I love the way it looks now okay so here we go so maybe instead of leaving the paper at six inches maybe it could go to you know four by one and a quarter no because that didn't work that last time um, maybe five Come on. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of a, let's do a strape of the foil. Let's tie that in. In half and three quarters, whatever that is. I would have to count the tips. <laughs> and this one is how long is this one? Uh, five. Whoop. Let's cut instead of score. That would be helpful. Let's put this across the top. shine in there. Yeah, that's okay. Now I was going to do this, but I don't know if I want to anymore. It's kind of too big, isn't it? Haven't, now I haven't, I haven't added my black, so maybe I need to add something black. Um, I just had a thought. Hate wasting. What are you going to do with the leftover pieces? But what I can do, I may on the insert, I could add them like along the bottom. Just, you know, make a, a straight line and attach them in there. You like black? I need to add a black in some space. I'm, all, I'm wondering though, here's what, here's what crossed my brain. It's, I think it's too pretty for the ketchup. I was thinking maybe I could do like a bunch of ketchup bottles. It's just the wrong color combo. It's just not. Is it worth stamping different foods all over? Hmm. Vertical looks good, doesn't it? Kind of does. I like it. I almost wonder if I should tuck a black layer in behind this one. These just don't, don't say barbecue. Maybe if I had it kept all of the um, strips this check. What about a burger? Let's go with the burger. Just a sentiment, yes, that can work too. Um, I did a sentiment, just a sentiment, on one of the cards that I was going to show you. So that's why I'm tempted to not do that right now. But I just think it would look nicer with just something. Okay. There is well done. There is holy smokes, it's your birthday. 
Are y'all okay if I just don't use anything from the barbecue set? I know. I know, right? I think you should do the ketchup bottle idea, but emboss them on white on your black circle die. Put. Yeah. Yes. And then we will make one ketchup bottle pop. Okay, good idea. Way to go, Karen. This is your color combo. <laughs> Ketchup. Versamark. Okay. Let's go to town. I'm just going to do up kind of half first. So I have a little area to hang on to. that so far. Come on. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that without that embossing, buddy. I'm just going to think I think I'm just going to use it. I think it's kind of a staple that is kind of messy. my I don't know where I put my paintbrush. Sorry if that bothers that noise bothers you. Okay. Let's heat this up. Well done with the steak. Yeah. And then let's finish up the other side. Um, I'm using my stamp and my embossing, buddy. Okay, it'll go quicker. Here we go. Way. I think that's good. But oh, sheesh, way over time today. Okay, heat. There's our little ketchup. And then I'm going to do one in red. The cherry cobbler. Cherry, cherry, cherry. Hello. What are you getting into now? Put 
in this feels like an episode of chopped <laughs> did I sign up for on tour I did and I know I'm missing the um, the demonstration <clears throat> pardon me um, I have to go back and have a look at that but if I put a little piece of vellum behind it I have a little piece. And maybe some. I do want to make like a ketchup card of some sort before the week's over. That's my goal. Because, you know, there are some of us out there that, you know, do really love ketchup. <laughs> um, I've cut back a lot because, you know, of keto. I, being on keto, doing keto, I don't know. Um, I can't have the sugar. It's in ketchup, but it doesn't mean I still like, don't like it. I think I'm going to make a little ribbon cut. Okay, and let's just, I think I'll pop that up, the little ketchup. I'm getting down to the, you know, square foot crafting. <laughs> there's square foot gardening and then there's square foot crafting, I tell ya. Okay. there the little ketchup and then behind it I'm going to put those same dimensionals to pop up the vellum layer okay and then I'm gonna have to think of something to how to pop up the other side I need a sentiment don't I I wonder if you would stack the ketchup bottle so they look like a like Christmas trees. Like the mirror cat. Oh my goodness, that would take forever. I'm so excited to be home again and getting to relax. Hi, Barbara. Oh, I'm better than a counselor. Mm. <laughs> okay, I still want to put black behind this. I'm going to put some sort of sentiment here. Um, we'll try to see if I have something catchy with ketchup <laughs> or let's catch up <laughs> in some, some kind of way. Um, uh, I'll think about this. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to have this on my blog later today when I finish this and this by George was a ch <laughs> I didn't show you my other two cards. Okay, here we go. This color combo was tough. This, it was for me. Um, okay, so here I know, a, I think it was Amy who had said, just put a sentiment. So I did that. And on this one, I decided to space out those rays, put a bigger space in between, and use a piece of DSP behind, as opposed to another color of cardstock. I think it's kind of cute so I did the little lay stitch uh, nope layering circles behind that scalloped edge and then the stitched circles there well done well done well done and then on the inside I had a one leftover uh, red piece and a little piece that goes there and then of course I had that and I just did well done well done well done for the front of the envelope and then I thought okay I need to use this and I, I was hoping that this would look like smoke the vellum yeah, I think maybe if I had have ripped the edges, that might have made it look a little more like smoke. But um, here is that color combo here. So yes, vellum. And so I basically had to just attach this end of the vellum underneath this red part. 
Um, I did add a little bit of snail tape on some of them that were kind of lifting a little. I also flicked. And to do these flames, I used daubers. I used crushed curry pretty much over the whole entire thing. Then I used pumpkin pie, just add a little bit in the middle, and then took my cherry cobbler dauber and just, just on the bottom, and that kind of made that three-dimensional look. And then I just kind of layered over top, stamping many, many times. I stamped in black um, over top of the flames, and I just couldn't see that holy smokes. So I, I love the vellum rays. Oh, thank you. So I ended up stamping it again and cutting it out and now you can see that holy smokes. And then of course, well done. I flicked on some stuff. I took my dauber and just kind of daubed a little bit there to make it look like ember is kind of flying in the sky. And then of course here I did that again too. Not sure what I'm going to do with, with this portion just yet, but um, I will think about it. I would probably just put a uh, happy birthday stamp of some sort, I think right there. But anyways, so those were the cards that I did ahead of time. Those were easier, easier of course, <laughs> than the one that, uh, the ones I had to do online, but that's all right. That's all right. So thank you everybody for hanging in there with me. Uh, that was a long go again. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the products that I used or uh, anything interests you you want to get of course that feature this week is buying that little barbecue set that stamp set which is really inexpensive I think it's $26 or if you place an order of $30 of whatever you like I'm gonna send you some of that silver foil that we've been kind of playing around with all week so there we go. I'm going to send somebody a card that was made today. Um, probably, let's go a share and a commenter. And then I'm going to send one to Karen because this is her color combo. So uh, make sure you do lot, have done lots of commenting and make sure you share this video to be entered into that separate draw. Next off, I just want to make sure If you are, not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Let's go back, get off of there. There we go. If you need a catalog, it's coming up soon. Um, I'm just waiting for them to arrive, but if you are in Canada and you don't aren't working with another demonstrator, I'd love to send you a catalog in the mail. Um, Yahoo. All right, tomorrow I will be here at 10 a.m. Once again, thankfully thinking of you. We're gonna be thinking of people whose name starts with the letter G. And we'll see who's winning those, uh, who's won those draws for these cards that I made today. All right, look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Thanks for being the highlight of my day. Bye.